Hello everyone, welcome to another podcast, question mark. I don't know, you can call it a podcast if you want, but um, this video is definitely different from my usual ones because it's longer and I'm just going to be talking the entire time. What happened is that the original video that I planned to post this week is still in the works, but I wanted to get a video out there anyway, so... I just pulled up this old footage and I was like, you know what, let's just do a long video. Today, I was in the mood to just sit down and talk about what I've been up to. Um, this video is just going to be some background footage of me drawing. No music, no sponsors, just me talking about what I've been up to because I've been gone for like, I don't know, three weeks. Um, I just keep taking breaks like everywhere. Uh, I'm I'm not consistent with my channel at all, but yeah, this video might be like a godsend to some of you who love long form content. It also might not be a popular video, but who knows, right? I just want to talk about stuff and like nerd out. Um, let me talk about this footage first in the background. So this footage is uh, an old assignment that I had worked on from my previous semester spring semester of college and this prompt was to take the concept of painting with drips and splatters you know how you see like those typical like artists just dripping and splattering paint and that like so the assignment was to take that concept and um apply it to the type of art that you do and the type of art that i do my department is uh character design and so I was like, okay, I'll implement drips and splatters into my character designs by just choosing ink, ink drips, anything with ink, right? I've always found that I've been fascinated with the inky cap mushroom, which is like this mushroom that looks like it's dripping, dripping ink, you know, from the cap. It just looks so cool and kind of edgy. So I was like, uh, I want to do that. And in the past, I actually had already made a character based off of it. So I thought it would be fun to kind of revisit that and see what I came up with this time around. Um, I ended up designing three characters because I, I couldn't choose between all my like concepts. And, and then halfway through, um, it ended up being two girls who are based off of mushrooms are two different types of inky cap mushrooms and then the the middle girl what ended up being based off of an ink pen instead of a mushroom but they're all like the theme is ink still you know ink pen ink mushroom and so for the most part this assignment was pretty successful um it you know and during critiques my my classmates liked them i submitted all three designs and they got to see some of my concept art too but at the same time, during critique, um, my eyes were open to something that I didn't consider with these designs, which is how they might play into stereotypes accidentally. Because um, this design consists of one white character and two black characters. When it came time for my classmates to ask me questions about like my process and like the decisions, the and like the decisions that I made, one of my black classmates asked why the black girls were bigger than the white girl. You know, why was the white girl skinny? And why were the mushrooms black and the ink pen was white? And they were completely valid questions. And at the time, I felt a little embarrassed because I didn't have answers to, to those very valid questions. Like, really like my reasoning was just that's kind of just how things ended up being like uh, I just made those decisions without really thinking too much about them I didn't have any intention when making those choices for these designs and really I should have because character design there's a lot of decisions that goes into it and you need to have reasons for those either it's pretty or what as long as you have a reason, right? And at the time when I was struggling to answer these questions um, and I didn't have like, a, I don't know, like a meaningful answer to them, I was just really hoping that 
my the classmate that had asked that wasn't misunderstanding my design choices as having bad intent when in reality it was just my privilege and ignorance showing about like stereotypes and it made me realize that I just mashed the diversity that I wanted to include into this assignment into these couple of characters so instead of spreading the traits out across all characters as humans actually are I just mashed it all into like one character or two characters and at the time I was trying to practice how to draw like different body types and so I made one of the girls bigger like I made two of the girls bigger actually and then one skinny um and my mind at the time wasn't thinking about how those choices for these designs could accidentally feed into stereotypes about black women. So this design or so this assignment was really a learning moment for me because after that, whenever I design a character who looks different from me, I, I try to think about the assumptions and thoughts that a person who does look like the character that I'm drawing might have when they see them because people want to be perceived in art. And, you know, if someone drew someone who looks like you in a certain way that rises like questions about stereotypes and stuff, you're going to know, you're going to want to know like why you're going to have questions and you're going to want answers. And it's as an artist, it's important to have those answers on hand in case someone does ask them. So in the future, I hope to grow and learn so that I could avoid situations like that where my designs, um, someone might think that like I'm saying black girls are bigger than white girls and white girls are skinny or something like that, you know, when in reality that wasn't the intent. But obviously art will always be interpreted differently by different people. But I do think it's still important to be aware of those types of things and topics as an artist, like stereotypes and stuff especially as a character designer, where you're going to be drawing a lot of different people. A lot of different people are going to be seeing your art. Yeah, it's just like important to be aware of that stuff. And at the time that I drew this, I wasn't aware of that stuff. But, you know, now I am and hopefully I've learned um, and I'm willing to learn even more. Gosh, I wasn't even supposed to talk about all that. I kind of just rambled went on a tangent about that thing but um i just wanted to talk about the background footage before i got into the real deal which is what have i been up to this past month because i kind of disappeared after uploading two videos but basically what happened is that i got into watching dungeons and dragons dnd and then eventually um I got into playing D&D and it became this whole obsession and addiction and that's just what I've been doing <laughs> instead of drawing. That's why I had to use old footage here because I didn't have any new footage because I haven't been drawing. Um, instead, I've been writing stories and making characters for Dungeons and Dragons, which is a little odd if you think about it because technically... If I'm making characters for Dungeons and Dragons, you would think that me as an artist would want to draw those characters, but no, I'm lazy. I just want to play the game instead of drawing. Um, so I'm going to start at the beginning. Um, basically, this, this, the rest of this podcast is going to be about D&D. So if you're not interested in that, goodbye, I guess. But basically what happened in the beginning was... Um, I'm a huge fan of drag and drag queens, and two of my favorite drag queens are Bob the Drag Queen and Monet Exchange. And I saw this trailer for uh, for the show Dimension Twenty, where they were playing Dungeons and Dragons with Alaska and Jujube, two other drag queens, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is like the biggest crossover in my life at the moment!" Like. Two of my literally top favorite drag queens are going to be playing D&D and it's going to be great. And I was so excited for it. And um, I watched that weekly and it really got me to learn a lot about D&D because before that, my only experience with D&D was um, uh, me and my sister wanted to watch Vox Machina and we were like, okay, before we watch it, 
let's try to watch, uh, you know, the actual Critical Role campaign to see, like, so, so that we would get a little bit more excited about seeing the things um, animated. And so we did that. But Critical Role, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to understand as a new person to D&D because it is not structured in a way where it's supposed to assist like people who are clueless about D&D to understand like what is actually going on. So we were like, oh, okay, I still don't know what's going on. So we just ended up watching Vox Machina. And um, I didn't really give Critical Role a chance after that. I mean, I, I know the people who are playing, but I didn't want to watch like five hour episodes of the campaign where I would only really digest and understand like probably 20% of it. I just didn't want to invest that time into it. But this one, I was, you know, like I was very invested in these drag queens and they are new to the game, too. So I was like, wow, this is going to be a great opportunity to learn about the game because the show is going to be catering to people who don't know how to play the game. And it was a great experience. It really made me want to play. And so I, I did. <laughs> so um, if you didn't know, I live with my sister and my sister is also just a nerd like me. We play video games together. My friend had gifted me Baldur's Gate, which is, you know, structured to be like D&D. You could roll virtual dice in the game. And so me and my sister had played that together for early access. Um, and I'm really excited because the game's going to come out and launch tomorrow, August 3. And I'm very excited for that. And me and my sister played through... The entire early access, um, I got her to be uh, familiar with some of like the mechanics of D&D through the game and some of the classes too. And after we finished that, I was like, like we were like on the cloud nine of like playing Baldur's Gate. And I just asked her like, do you want to try and play D&D with like just the two of us? And I was like looking it up on Reddit, like can you even play D&D &D with just two people? Can I DM with my sister as a player? Like, is that a thing people do? And it was. And I started looking into it and, you know, she agreed to try it. I, we just like started doing it. I started writing um, sessions and like we started creating characters. My sister, she she's the type of person who wouldn't really be totally excited about just playing an entire like campaign or adventure by herself with only one character because she's used to playing games like uh, Dragon Age Origins, like Mass Effect, you know, like Skyrim, where you are the main character and you're affecting the world around you, but you also have constantly like companions with you. Um, and that's how Baldur's Gate was too, you know, Divinity Original Sin also. So she was like, okay, so I'm not just alone. Can I make you know, can you make like companions for me? And so I was like, okay, I'll make you a couple companions. And we ended up going with uh, a pirate like type of campaign so that it would make sense that she's with other people. So her character would be the captain of the pirate crew and then her companions would be her crew. Um, kind of like One Piece, basically. And she made a, uh, a rogue fairy. I mean... Most of what we did, uh, there's a lot of house rules. I mean, like, I'm still new to DMing um, and I have to constantly, like, fact check the rules. And sometimes, like, checking the rules gets a little annoying. And so you just kind of make things up as you go. Some might say maybe we're not playing D&D, &D, right? I mean, we're trying our best to, but, you know, I guess there isn't a right way of playing D&D &D because it's D&D. &D. You can do whatever you want with it. I had just looked up like a pre-written like pirate campaign or adventure, I guess. And I split that up into three or four sessions. Um, I made my care. Uh, I made my sister some companions. Well, she made some of them too. In the end, we ended up having um, her as a fairy rogue captain, Satyr Bard, um, a barbarian mentor who I love. I love that Barbarian Minotaur. And then an Air Genasi uh, Warlock. Because my sister, she was like, I don't want to do those boring, like, 5e player handbook races. So she looked up all the other, like, more interesting races from other um, books in D&D, &D, and she chose from them. 
So I was like, I didn't even know like you can be a minotaur in D&D. I, I was just like thinking she would choose like a half elf or an elf or like a dwarf or, or something like that. And then I was so surprised when she just suddenly chose like a satyr, an air genasi and a minotaur. And I was like, what? Like, where did these come from? So I had to do research on them, too. Um, but like D&D is so fun. Uh, after playing games like like Dragon Age Origin, Skyrim, Divinity Original Sin 2, Baldur's Gate 3, where you're, you know, supposed to travel with this these group of people, your companions, and you make choices and you affect the world around you. It's easy to kind of feel like, okay, I'm going to play this RPG and my character is going to do all these things to affect the world. But in reality, you're still stuck in this, like, linear kind of thing where you really only have three or four sometimes only two choices in a situation but in D&D you literally have infinite choices like you can literally do whatever you want as long as it's within the scope of your own imagination and it's great it was great for the two of us who've been playing RPG games and kind of feeling that where it's like oh like we have choice but we don't really the first session was a blast. I wrote the first session as a DM intending for it to be two hours long. And we ended up playing for nine hours. I mean, we took breaks in between, but it was nine hours. Um, I had to improvise a lot of things. And honestly, the improvised stuff ended up being the best because I was a bit nervous that like it wouldn't be fun or I would be fumbling like RPing the NPCs in the world and stuff, but um, improvising is actually really fun because you just go along with whatever crazy thing you're, or with whatever wild thing that your mind comes up with at the time, and you just roll with it and see where it takes you. So, I guess there's a lot of time for for this video, so I will just talk about what happened in this adventure. So. Um, so my sister's character walked into this like town and one of the things I had set up was that one of her possible companions was supposed to be getting robbed and then she could like decide if she wants to help him out or not. And she did indeed help him out and she ended up just deleting like the dwarven thief that had like the pouch of money. And I was shocked. I mean, she literally one shot this guy. He had 11 HP and she cast Witch Bolt and rolled a 12. And so she killed him. And I was so surprised because I had a lot planned for that NPC, like that thief. He was eventually, like later down the line, going to be involved in a quest where he had a debt to pay to like this like scary person. And that person was going to hire the PCs to um, kill him. And he was supposed to have this whole thing where he had a stash of money that he was going to try and persuade the, the players to take uh, by sparing his life. And that he was also like the lover slash boyfriend of uh, the dwarven shopkeeper who sells uh, armor and weapons. And so I had a lot, a lot planned for this guy. And she, she deleted him within the first 10 minutes of the session and I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So my sister still has the mindset of like, okay, we're playing like this game. And she's like, I want to loot. I'm going to loot this dwarf's body. So she asked me like, what is, what is on the dwarf? So I just told her, okay, um, there's a note that says something about a stash. And there's also an, an envelope with a letter inside. And the letter ended up being um, a love letter to the armorer and eventually this information started to unravel in the session and it was like really fun to see her reaction to stuff her character ended up feeling bad after just decimating this dwarf because you know she hadn't considered that this this npc or like random thug on the street might have an entire story to them and he did so uh that was really fun and eventually they went on like this whole adventure um, with their pirate crew. They got some treasure and 
it ended up lasting four sessions. It was originally supposed to be three, but the third one was like reaching like five hours. So we're like, okay, let's put this up into another session. Let's like continue it tomorrow or something. And the great thing about two two person D and D is that you just need to worry about two people's schedule. And me and my sister live together. It's summer vacation. We don't have a lot of plans. So we could literally play like day after day if we wanted to. I mean, it's essentially what we did. Really, the only time constraint was sleep, eating, and how long I could prepare for a session, which um, I'm slowly starting to get the groove of what kind of DMing style that I like. Because for the first session... I think it ended up being nine hours long because I had like over prepared for it where I had this overload of information that I always like I wanted to fit into the session. I did indeed fit it into the session, but the consequence was that it lasted nine hours. But we had fun that entire nine hours like it, it was fun throughout. Um, so I think I'm the type of DM that. I really only require like a little bit of notes and then I just improvise the rest. But after that adventure, I'm working on writing like the rest of the campaign, like to see what the next like story arc could be. I also ended up just buying a ton of dice because I discovered that I'm the type of dice enjoyer where I would rather have a collection of uh, not cheap, but like, you know, moderately priced, good quality dice rather than having a small collection of very expensive, very, very good quality dice. So I just have some like polymer, like resin dice uh, of different colors that I, I choose from. But, you know, they're like twinkly sometimes and stuff. Uh, I ended up discovering that I really like metal dice because I like the dice to be heavy in my hand. I like to hear it chonk as it rolls. Um, and I don't really get that satisfaction with the light, you know, resin dice. But I, I'm like addicted to buying dice. It's it's an obsession. Like there's little, there's literally only two of us. Like really, we only need two sets of dice. But I bought like six and I bought more this week because I love buying mystery bags. I'm not too picky about what I get as long as I get something cool. And so I bought a few mystery dice and I'm really excited to get them. I think they're getting here like in the weekend. So that is what I've been up to lately. <laughs> I've also been getting really into D20. Because after watching Dungeons and Drag Queens, um, I was like, you know, I have this dropout TV subscription. I might as well use it. And so I started watching Fantasy High because I was on Reddit looking for like, oh, like which seasons of D20 should I watch if I like Dungeons and Drag Queens? Uh, the top choice was Fantasy High because that also had people who were new to D&D and who were still learning. And so I was like, OK, I'm still learning. That would be great to see. And I loved it, and it further made me want to play. You know, a part of me does wish I had, uh, like, a bigger group of people to play with. But at the moment, I'm enjoying this uh, this little thing me and my sister have going on because it, it allows us to truly be ourselves. It allows us to stumble and fall and, like, you know, just mess around with, like, role-playing and what we can do in the campaign. We can break the rules if we want to. No one's being strict or anything because I feel like playing D&D &D with a bigger group of people especially as a new person I'm gonna have insecurities about a lot of things I'm gonna have like insecurities about the type of character that I make where I'm like oh what if people think that the character that I made is lame what if I'm too embarrassed to RP and to be honest I did like read the player's handbook and it talks about the different types of role playing because there's active role playing where you literally role play as your character and then there's um i think it's called descriptive or passive role playing where you're just describing what your character says and does instead of trying to act 
as them, like doing a voice and gesturing and stuff. I thought that I would like descriptive role playing a little bit more, but I actually like active role playing. I mean, I struggle with it a little bit, but it's fun. So technically I do like a mixture of both. But if I was with a group of people, I would be so like embarrassed and insecure, even though really there's no reason to be because technically they are also going to be role playing. It's like doing a speech like for class and you feel embarrassed that you have to go out there and do a speech. But in reality, you shouldn't be feeling embarrassed because everyone else has to do it. It's like that. But, you know, it's it's a human brain thing. You just Sometimes you just can't help but feel certain things. It can't be prevented. And I, I have that anxiety of, like, the thought of RPing in front of people, even if they are my friends. But um, my sister, you know, I've known her my entire life. She knows how embarrassing and weird and um, wild I can be. I know that about her too. So so we have free reign over how we behave around each other. And, and it's honestly has been a great way of learning D&D. And I really look forward to doing it more. So aside from buying dice and writing the sessions, I've also discovered that I really love the like miniature aspect, tabletop gaming part of D&D where you're essentially making your own board game, right? You could have like terrain, modular tiles, uh, you can draw maps and, you know, move your characters around it. And I got into my arts and crafts era. I had like, I have a bunch of cardboard from, you know, Amazon deliveries and stuff that I've kept. And I was like, you know what, let me use this. And the skills that I've learned from being in 3D art at college use it to try and make D&D a little bit more fun by having little props and, you know, miniatures and stuff. And I also have a sticker cutter. So I would just, I would print out the characters. I would use my sticker cutter to cut them out. And then I would paste them onto some cardboard, like, standees that I made. And that would be our, our like, character miniatures. And then I just made like barrels and boxes with cardboard and I tried to make some dungeon tiles and like some terrain, some trees, and I've I've really been enjoying that. It's just fun to like make little stuff like I feel like in another life I would have like instead of being a digital 2D artist, I feel like in another life I would have been a diorama artist because I love dioramas. I I love like looking at them. I love watching videos of people making them. And now I've found that I love watching people make stuff for D&D cuz it's like it's like have you seen those videos of like people cooking small food? Like that's also interesting. I don't know for some reason small stuff is just fascinating and it's fun it's fun to see it's fun to hold it's fun to make well the quality is certainly not good because i'm new to it and i'm only using cardboard but so i'm not going to show any pictures or, or footage of that maybe in the future when i'm better but for the most part i'm just having fun doing what i'm doing but the consequence is that i haven't been working um i've been doing stuff with my shop but I haven't been making new designs I haven't been drawing like I said I haven't been doing commissions and in turn I haven't been making videos so I've just been enjoying my summer vacation playing D&D and I'm happy you know um, summer's ending and it, eventually it's going to be time to stop uh, playing D&D so that I could you know, just work instead. But I really hope to like continue this journey because I'm like, like it's like a newfound passion, I guess, is D and D, and I hope one day I could play with like a bigger group of friends. It's just, uh, it's very exciting to just get into new things, and it's a thing that I do where I just find a hobby, I latch on to it like really, really hard, and I stick with it for like a few months. And then I forget about it. I do hope I don't forget about D&D. Um, because in the past, I've like, I've latched onto the hobby of bookbinding. 
um, doing my nails, doing nail art, and it lasted a while and then it fades. I, I like end up looking at like all the money that I spent for that hobby, but I don't regret, regret any of it. You know, um, I don't think I'm ever going to re regret buying the dice because I've already gotten like the satisfaction that I've wanted from using the dice. It's these like hobbies that kind of keep me going in life because like life would be so boring if I didn't have hobbies. I'm so excited for Baldur's Gate tomorrow. I'm pretty sure I'm going to like not sleep for a while. I'm just going to absolutely wreck my sleeping schedule once again once Baldur's Gate 3 fully releases and thinking about D&D &D again it just makes me want to like it makes me want to get everyone in my life into D&D &D because it's a thing that a lot of people can enjoy because I mean technically everyone can enjoy it because it's just imagination it's playing pretend instead as adults and like, I, I want to get my boyfriend into it. I want to get my other friends into it. I just want to get everyone into it. And I want to get my family into it. And uh, this week, I actually visited my family because my sister um, recently gave birth to my new nephew. And my two other niece and nephews, they're like uh, seven to eight years old. And I was like talking to my sister. I was like, do you think like, how fun would it be if we kind of just tried like a one shot with them? And I had brought some of my dice. I brought like one dice set just to, to try it out with them. And I was looking up these one shots and I found one that was made for kids. And a lot of it ended up being improvised. Um, and, you know, at first the kids, they were like, what is this? You know, I just told them like, it's like playing pretend, but like with us instead. And you get to roll dice. And they made their characters. Um, I actually printed out some pre-generated characters for them, but they were able to come up with the name and appearance of the character. And it was really fun, even just that, like seeing what they were come up coming up with. So what happened was I printed out four. So I printed out a wizard, a cleric, a fighter, and a rogue. I I just presented to and I, I wouldn't have a lot of time to super prepare for it. So I just like handed them these pieces of paper and I was like, okay, which one do you want to be? Do you want to be the sneaky person? Do you want to be the person who fights with weapons? Do you want to cast magic? Or do you want to cast holy magic where you're, you're like, you know, you have like a religion of some sort. You know, one of my, my niece was like, I want to do magic. And then my nephew was like, I want to be sneaky. But then when they started deciding what their characters uh, looked like, and they love drawing too, I guess art runs in the family, but my my nephew named his character um, Yehehe, who was, I think, supposed to be a human, but then he decided he wanted to be 12 feet tall, and I absolutely let him. And, and then he decided later on, he also wants to be buff, uh, a buff 12 feet tall person. And my, ne my niece was like, how are you supposed to be sneaky if you're 12 feet tall? But he kind of threw away the sneaky part of his character. And he was just, I'm just going to be, I'm going to be called Buff Yeah. Like that was his character's full name. And I was loving it. I was like, okay, this is going to be amazing. And then my niece, her wizard, she started drawing. And at first she um, began drawing a, a male character, a boy. And then she changed her mind halfway through and she started turning him into a girl. She, I heard her say, and it was so cute and precious. She said, um, my character's name is Starly and she has a cute voice because she's trans. And I was like, wow, like a person in my family is not transphobic. That's like amazing to hear. And she ran with this character. And uh, my other sister, my nephew's mom, also played she named her character like Wuwa or something Wuwa the wizard or something like that who was a gnome a three feet tall gnome my other sister who was playing with us she made a character named Bing Bong who I think like ended up being a barbarian gnome like they were just changing stuff about their character sheets and at one point I was just like you know what throw the character sheet away who cares about stats? We're playing with kids. They don't understand it. 
And so the, the premise of the one shot that I had looked up was the kids were supposed to be going to a birthday party. And then the cake gets uh, stolen by an ogre. You know, they're supposed to go find this ogre, get the cake back. They get attacked by goblins at one point. Starting out, the, the kids were a little, like, iffy with the role play. They were shy, you know. But um, I think once the adults started to get into it, they realized, like, hey, like I, like, I don't have to be embarrassed about doing this. So when they got attacked by the goblins, my sister had a talking bush with her. And she was like, I throw the talking bush at the goblin. And you know, my niece and nephew started laughing. They were into it. It was, it was fun. And I think at that point when my sister threw the bush is when they realized that they could really do anything they wanted and that I wasn't going to tell them that they can't do that, you know? And my nephew was like, I take my sword and I like spin like a helicopter, you know, to attack like multiple goblins. And my niece, like they had, like they had deleted all the, go the goblins except for one, who they got down to one HP. I had him start running away, and my sister just tackled this guy down. And my my niece, she had like a wagon, and I remember when this wagon was introduced, I was like, "What? How is this wagon gonna be useful, or how is this wagon gonna be an important thing in the story?" But she made it important. My niece was like, I want to strap this goblin down to the wagon and push him off a cliff. And I was fully going to let her. But then my sister was like, wait, we need to question him for information. So my my uh, my niece was like, oh, OK. And so they she just threatened to push him off a cliff. The goblin ended up uh, leading them while still strapped to the wagon to the ogre's hut where um, I said, okay, there's a beehive next to the ogre's hut. And my, my niece wanted to convince the bees to like make a cake. And I was going to let her, but like, you know, there was like conflicting interests with the other players. But basically what they ended up doing is they took the wagon that the goblin was on and they wanted to push the door down by like slamming the goblin on the wagon into the door. I had them do strength checks for it and they all passed and it was a great time. And um, in the end, they managed to befriend the ogre and it was like a wholesome ending, low key, you know? And it was just fun. It, it wasn't what I had imagined playing D&D &D with kids would be. But it was a fun, like, 30 minutes to an hour. Um, technically, it stopped being D&D &D at one point, and it just ended up being, like, playing pretend except with dice. I don't know if you could still call that D&D, &D, maybe. It was it was fun, and it helped me, like, realize the potential of D&D because &D, I, I started thinking a lot, like, if I had kids, I would totally introduce D&D &D to them. Um, because it's, it's a great way for adults and kids to both bond because you're just imagining things together. You're making a story. You're constructing a world and a story together. And that's beautiful, you know. And I've always been really into making stories, but I've always found that I don't have the patience and time to write an entire book in like book format, narrative format. But with d and I'm able to construct a story and characters that I can be invested in that like other people can be invested in, but it's more fun than just sitting down, writing a book, having to worry about grammatical errors and whether or not stuff makes sense because it doesn't have to make sense in D&D. &D. I'm kind of thinking about like, making stories that way because I do know there's like solo D&D &D where there's just no DM and you just roll dice for your decisions and stuff but I have to look more into that but it sounds so fun I am a bit worried that I'm like okay like what if I'm in too deep and I just stop drawing but I don't think that's the case but I'm just like I need to work but I just want to I don't want to work you know like just 
at one point stuff just gets so fun that you just you don't want to work anymore I mean that's the great thing about being self-employed is that I'm my own boss and I can decide that I have this vacation even if I decide that I want a vacation I still need money because rent and food matter um and yeah that is that is essentially all I wanted to talk about. I think I got everything off my chest about D&D because, um, you know, I didn't want to bother someone else by just rambling on and on and on about D&D in person in a conversation. So instead, I did it in a video. And you're if you're listening to this, you did it willingly. I didn't force you to listen to me. And I hope you enjoyed it. And um if you made it this far, if you listened to entire the entire video, I I want to thank you and I want to salute you for listening to all of that because that was wild. Um, I mean, I hope you enjoyed it. Comment about D and D. I totally want to read some comments. I always read every single one of my comments, even if I don't reply. But I will read them all, and I'm excited to see what you guys think about this video. If you watched it. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Hopefully I can get my um, second attempt at alcohol markers out pretty soon also. And that I don't continue to take a break from YouTube because I'm addicted to D&D. But we will see how my mood turns out. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next video. Goodbye.